I fly last night from Portugal. Oh my goodness. I really want to stay longer there, but I do need to this day. So here I am. It's still very cold. <laughs> <laughs> it was an amazing weather there. Um, we are just waiting for the machine to warm up. And uh, I'm really happy that we finished lunch. The last time they invited me to talk was over lunch, and I find quite a challenge to have toilet talk over lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm much happier that we just eat. Um, I put this picture here um, just for you to have an idea how big is our colon. And uh, normally your colon is as, if, if we stretch it up, is as high as you. So it's quite a big and important organ for us to be concerned about it. Um, I'm going to start to explain a little bit how my machine works. So we go step by step because I know it's kind of a taboo to talk about all the rest. <laughs> okay, so how does it work? What is colon hydrotherapy? Colon hydrotherapy is a way to clean your body and removing waste from the large intestine without the use of chemicals. So we introduce, like the treatment dures around 45 minutes and during that 45 minutes I put water in and water come out too and so that water will dil dilute lots of toxins present in your colon. By the way, as you see I have a really strong accent and sometimes I actually uh, create uh, words I call them portal English. <laughs> and sometimes it's really good because people just think it's a really weird medical term, so they don't ask me what you mean. Please ask. So this is my machine. My machine is really good. And it is a very safe in terms of uh, uh, sanitation. And the reason why is, number one, is FDA approved. So there's lots of people out there doing colon hydrotherapy uh, with the most amazing instruments. Uh, this one is totally safe. This machine has, as you see, a water system. So the water is, it has two filters and also ultraviolet light. So it's a quite clean and safe water. Um, I also have, um, I don't know if I know how to work the light, there it is. Here, I regulate the temperature. The temperature cannot go more higher than 38 degrees. And if it goes, the machine shuts down. So it's quite safe. I also have, I never know how to say these right the right word in English, I believe, is gorge. Gauge. Gauge. <laughs> For pressure. And that's a huge difference also from a regular enema and this machine. And the reason why is I work with pressure water. And the reason why pressure water is so good is I go all over your colon, not just the first part. So I can take much more out. The pressure, however, it only goes to tube C, or translation to our regular language is, I will not blow out your colon. <laughs> <laughs> it's very safe. And once more, if anybody has a blockage, in like a tumor, polyps, whatever, it creates pressure. And if I'm really not paying attention and looking to there and talk to you, the machine again will shut down. So it's a very safe machine. Over here, you cannot see very well because for the picture I turned the light 
off or you will just see a flash. There's a pipe there with light behind. So whatever comes out of you, I will see it. And uh, actually it was very interesting because I was telling John that lots of people that buy um, synthetic vitamins, I can see them come out there, <laughs> not digested at all. So whatever comes out, I will see it over that pipe there. Okay. The machine also has a build-up um, purification, uh, sorry, the, uh, I disinfect my full machine between each person. But even like that, he has um, so a, a, a backup valve. What means is whatever goes inside doesn't come out. So, and I use, everything is disposable. So I actually brought it here, so you can have a look. So that's what I use. And all the speculums are disposable, so there's really no contamination. Here is the room where I work. So you comfortable lie down. Um, everything happens in this table. So that's another difference from an enema and a colonic. The colonic, um, I use two, how can I call these in English? Um, there's, so there's the water goes in and out and everything comes out through the machine. So you, it's not like I don't put water and you run in the washroom. Um, <laughs> you just right there, you lie down in your bed. Did you show, show them that? You are using, I'm just kind of breaking the ice and explain these things because I swear you, almost people don't come to colonics because they think they're going to poo in front of me. They're going to be there with a bum like that and I'm just looking. They're going to be, it's going to smell horrible. It's not true. So you quite decent. I only brought a girl pants, sorry man. I swear I will not put you on flowers. <laughs> so you're gonna wear <laughs> you're gonna wear these pajama pants. They just have a little hole in the back. <laughs> um, so you're gonna be lie down in your bag wearing pajama pants. So you're very modest, you're not there showing everything. Of course you hooked to the speculum and the holes that is also connected to my machine. But there's no smell. Uh, normally there's no pain, we are blobbing. Uh, sometimes you, f you have like a slight feeling of diarrhea. It's like you know I want to go. And, but it's that simple. Oops, I keep pointing there. <laughs> So, colon hydrotherapy is a very safe and comfortable experience. Um, I, I brought these pictures because I think they show very well. See, if your colon is totally full, here will be the first phase where we put some water in. And here, if you do an enema, the water only goes to this part here. See? With the colon hydrotherapy, the water goes further and further and further till the end. And you all clean up. <coughs> I know it's just funny. It's amazing how we still laugh at this age about talking this. about poo. <laughs> So why should I take care of my colon? And lots of people ask me the question, why do we need colon hydrotherapy? Like years ago, nobody did it. It's not enough just go every day in the washroom. My answer is no, it isn't. And, oops, it isn't enough. And before John talked about that, we don't eat like we used to eat before. We don't breathe what we used to breathe before. 
So even if you eat raw food, uh, you have you exercise every day, you still breathe. There's pesticides in everywhere. Our body needs to detox, so we need to do it. And we can also do colon hydrotherapy as a prevention. And why should we do it as a prevention? The reason why is our liver is the main organ to detox our body. If our colon is packed with toxins, the liver is working really hard to try it. And if we don't eliminate it, all the other organs that are responsible for elimination in our, organ, in our body, like the kidneys, your lymphatic system, your skin, your lungs, they're going to be overworking. Lots of people have rashes. Why? Because your body cannot get rid of all the toxins, so he's trying to take them out of, through your skin. Mm -hmm. Your lymphatic system will be totally clogged up if you don't eliminate what you should eliminate. There's lots of women with cancer and uh, the lymphatic system is just not working properly. So our food, the people that eat processed food, the, I don't know if you ever did an experience, but I challenge you to do. If you make an hamburger homemade and buy one at McDonald's, put them both in a Tupperware box and keep them for two weeks. The hamburger that is homemade will be start decomposing. The other one will be exactly like when you bought it. <laughs> oh. So imagine that inside of your body. Like your body will be working so hard, so hard to try to decompose that food. It's almost impossible to break down. It's like eating plastic. Wow. You just can't do it. So, what I used to say to people is, what we are doing to our body is, imagine that you are working four shifts a day with very little sleep. <laughs> yeah, imagine, how would you feel? <laughs> Awful. <laughs> That's what we are doing to our body, especially our liver. It's, it's hard. I'm not going to say the word, I'm going to be really fancy and say C-R-A-P. <laughs> so the average people are carrying several pounds of dried, dried fecal matter. So almost all of us eat, the, eat lots of products with flour, with dairy and processed foods with preservatives, we cannot digest that very fast. Where it goes? Just stays there a long, long time. <laughs> so lots of people, even that they go every day in the washroom, they have a huge build up of fecal matter around the colon. Lots of people, for example, their stool is really, really thin. Why? Because there's a huge buildup of fecal matter around the colon. I will say that, unfortunately, almost North American people have a love affair for coffee, and that's the C. Refined sugar is the R. Stretch alcohol and processed food. They love crap. And who pays? Our body. Because we cannot process that very well. And as an example, I just give you an example of myself. Um, since a while ago, um, I was suffering from horrible back pain. And I'm also a certified shiatsu therapist. 
and I worked for seven years with a team of seven naturopaths. And as you know, I'm well informed about what to do. I tried everything. That thing will not go away. I did all kinds of therapies, acupuncture, physiotherapy, chiropractor, you name it. And I was just getting worse and worse. And in my age, with the hormonal change that probably lots of women here uh, experience the same, our body just changed. It's very, everything starts being very different. And I tried everything. And then I did life blood analysis. And I went there quite suspicious. But when the analyst uh, told me, you have a problem in your left hip. And she says, see here, you see? And I'm looking, I saw something different. I had no clue that was my hip. <laughs> <laughs> but it was there, and it was amazing. And I just really, really pay attention what she told me, and I start changing my diet. And one of the things that went right away out was gluten. And I can tell you, in three weeks, of putting wheat out of my diet, mm. I had no more back pain. It was that easy. And that was unbelievable. Um, as I told you too, I came yesterday from Portugal. Portuguese live on bread. <laughs> they just love bread. And it's this smell, like they cook fresh bread three times a day. They don't eat old bread. And and fortunately, it was one of the things that I missed the most. I didn't went to see my family in Portugal for six years. So as you can imagine, yes, I sin. I eat tons of bread. And today I get up and I felt it right back in my back. <laughs> so the thing is, when you start being clean, and suddenly you eat things that you used to eat before, our body feels it right away. And it's bad, but in one way it's very good because I know right away what it was. So, no crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, unfortunately, in big, this image is not the best. Um, I just put this here so you can see several problems that can occur in your colon. And one of the things that I want to talk about it is you should eat and go in the washroom at least three times a day to have a quite clean colon. And fortunately, like I have a client of mine that just came to see me not long ago and she told me, you know, I go three days without going. And I went to see my doctor, and my doctor says, that's normal in your age, especially after menopause. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. So imagine if you put uh, in the top of your skin something really toxic and leave it there for three days. Can you imagine how irritated could be your skin? Why is your colon different? It isn't. So, I don't know also if you're aware, but uh, uh, cancer, colon cancer in North America is for men number one and number two for women. It's serious. And one of the main reasons is how long we leave all that toxic matter in contact to our colon. So here, I don't know if you can see well, but it's some of the problems and irritations that can happen in your colon. And also just to give you an idea, if your colon doesn't work and decides I'm in strike, your legs start falling apart and you can't walk, you will be blind. So. I think there's a joke around there, I don't know the full joke, but it's very true that the colon is the boss, there's no question. Wow. If it shuts down, your body shuts down, period. <coughs> this is 
this is kind of gross, but I just want you to have an idea. This gentleman here with this ginormous belly, he was in a senior's home, and unfortunately, I don't think the people that were taking care of him were very efficient. And they let him go for almost 30 days without going to the washroom. Oh. And he was complaining for several and several days of abdominal pain. He even, if you look right here, he, he got a hernia. Uh, when the doctors got to see him, he went to the hospital, there was not even noise of gas passing through. Unfortunately, he died right away after. And this is his colon. That's how much it was inside. And unfortunately, not to this exaggeration, but there's lots of people that walk with very similar things like that, because they just don't go in the washroom. So it's really, really important to think about what you eat. And lots of people also suffer from bloating and they think it's normal. It isn't. If you really suffer from bloating, it's because you're not processing your foods well. So, and also if you eat really fast, all your food is in your colon, but it goes there in big chunks. And what's going to happen for that to become stool or poo, <laughs> um, it's going to need to be break down and the only way is by rotten. So it's pretty much like carrying a compost bucket. Wow. It's disgusting. Hmm. Uh, so what that means is if you, uh, if you carry lots, like if you don't go in the washroom, what's going to happen is you are intoxifying your body. So all the stool is there. There's a part of your colon that still reabsorbs the water back to your body. And like, I'm, I'm going back a little back. Imagine you eat. All your digestion is done in the small intestine. And then whatever your body doesn't want and is waste is passed to your colon, to your large intestine. But if it just stays there, the toxins are also reabsorbed in some way. So if you're not going to the washroom for 3, 4, 30 days, then you're just intoxifying your body. So that's what happened to him. Yeah. Here there's another example. So this is the shape of a healthy colon. If you don't go to the washroom for a long time, or for example, if you use laxatives, almost people think it's just cool to use laxatives because if you go in the hospital and because you don't go for a while, that's what they give you. Laxatives create an habituation, plus what the laxatives do too, is your colon gets used to go without exercise and it starts getting relaxed. So your colon prolapses. It's just, it, it, it loses the muscle. It's like if you're in the bed for a long, long time and just someone move you a little bit your legs every day, you have no muscle. The same will happen to the colon. So here, there are several shapes of the colon. After some of them because of laxatives, some of them because of just constipation, etc. And so one of the things that colonics does, that in my opinion is great, and it's very different from uh, uh, taking laxatives, is we put the water in, and it's kind of like taking your colon to the gym. <laughs> it's true. Because 
it's going to obligate the colon to work with his own peristatals. Peristatals is his own movement. So it's very different from a laxative that is just going to really irritate your colon and provocate kind of the diarrhea and put it out. And it doesn't clean the full colon too. Once more, it only cleans the first part of the colon. And so colon hydrotherapy is very efficient because it goes through all, plus it stimulates your normal movement to push it out. Um, it really depends. If it's in this bad, bad shape, sometimes it doesn't go back to the regular uh, uh, shape. What I recommend, it, it, it will become much better. Um, I have a client that uh, uh, she suffered from really, really, really severe constipation. And we had tests from before and after, and there was a huge improvement. But I don't believe she's going to go totally back to normal, but she's going in the washroom by herself. But she didn't change just uh, uh, her diet. And, uh, and that's one of the things that is actually my passion. I'm a totally believer that constipation is not just a physical issue. I think there's lots of emotional constipation associated. So that's one of the things that I love to do with my clients, is go a little bit through what is the source. And uh, I don't deal just with constipation, I deal with several issues related to digestion. So lots of times, for example, that client, she starts going also in the gym and do abs. Like, we need to exercise these muscles to kind of hold it in. Um, other thing that I see a lot, um, as you saw before, my machine has like a pipe with light behind where I can see everything that passed through. And uh, I see the most amazing things, as you can believe. Actually, I have a friend of mine in Portugal that uh, long years ago I used to love to read the tarot and things like that. And in the other day I was commenting to her and I said, you know, I just love, I can see who they are just through the poo. And she starts laughing and she says, oh, now you are a shitty reader. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, I, I, I just can't. And, uh, and so one of the most common things, it's actually candida, yeast. Um, unfortunately, almost all of us have it. One of the tests that I, I recommend to all of you, just to make sure you have candida or not, is the saliva test and uh, it's very easy because you just spit in your glass and very very shortly you will see if you have it or not. Um, I can see it pass through very easily and uh, candida is really bad and one of the reasons is almost people eat lots of sugar and uh, candida just lives in sh on sugar as cancer does too. So if our pH is very acid and you have candida, you're just creating the best environment for parasites, for bacteria, for everything you don't want in your body. And uh, so that's a very important thing. So if you have candida, colonics will be awesome for you too. And I, tell almost people does it, unfortunately. So other things also, I can see, this is another story that I love. Um, one time I had actually a client with candida, like lots, we're not talking little, and I put them in a cleanse, what is a diet for, it depends how severe it is, like the meaning I do is 10 days, but normal is much bigger. And of course she was cheating. 
And then she, we were doing colonics at the same time. What is something that I truly recommend is you doing a big cleanse and at the same time do colonics. <coughs> and she come by and I'm just seeing grapes. There's grapes. And one of the things I told her was no fruit. And in some cases, I allowed one piece of fruit a day when doing the candida cleanse. Sometimes I just take it totally off. And I ask her, are you eating fruit or grapes? And she's like, no. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, maybe I'm seeing something wrong. But then there were so many that I just show her. And she just starts laughing and says, OK, OK, I did it yesterday. <laughs> So I can see everything there. So enjoy the benefits of colon therapy. Lots of my clients um, that are on painkillers for back pain, for many other, lots of people now have what they call the fibromyalgia, what in my opinion is totally just a diet issue, that's it. And it's very easy to get rid of. So one of the things I love is after of working with a patient for long periods of time, and they have no more need of drugs. And that to me is like, yeah. So lots of people also say that um, after colonics, they sleep much better. So if your body is totally clean, you feel much more energy, you sleep better. And one amazing thing is you feel so much more clear, like all that foggy head is gone. I didn't put here, but I just want you to be aware, so when you go home and you go in the washroom, you can have an idea if you really need it or not. A healthy stool should not float or fall right away, be the bottom of the toilet, should be kind of half-half. So it's a sign of kind of toxic if that happens. <coughs> so my suggestion to you is that uh, a colonic is a gift that you give to yourself and to your body, mind and soul because it's, it's the full picture that we are looking here. And, you know, you're really comfortable there. There's no reason whatsoever for us not to have a colonic. And with these, I say thank you. I don't know. Um, I left a little bit of time in the end because um, I'm, I'm open to any questions. And uh, so please be free to any questions. What's your name? For children that are constipated, is it, can they do colonics? Um, normally for children. I don't love to work with children just for constipation. Um, I've been working with lots of children for more severe reasons. And the reason why is it can be a little traumatic for them because I'm putting something up there. Not that much. I only put maxim two inches. But... Uh, um, I, I, I love to talk, and they can come and see me. And what I do is lots of times I just do a diet plan with the parents. And if that doesn't work, and if it's uh, already creating severe problems in their health, then I will definitely do it. But I will first change their diet before I need the colonic. At what age should they start? Can they, it was, is recommended? Cause I have uh, around 12, but I worked, when I, I used to work in the uh, Fort Langley Integrated uh, Health Clinic, and uh, one part of the clinic used, used, no, it is still a cancer clinic, yeah. so I worked a lot with cancer children, and also children with lupus, and there's no question there, so I, I, I did colonics to them because the benefit overcome the trauma. But it's a challenge for them. She's over, she's over 12. I was just wondering, she's having problems with her... Um... Yeah. I think over 12 they are okay, because one of the issues here is it takes 45 minutes. Yeah. 
yeah. where they need to be still. Like if they run away, this, oh. the yeah. hose comes <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of a challenge to have a six-year-old, you know what I mean, lie down there with, okay, I'm putting water in, and oh, it, it's just too much of a challenge for them. Yeah. And it can be a little bit traumatic. Yeah, of course. No, I Even that I have older. children's background. Yeah. I still consider a child. But yeah. Yeah. So we always need to think, like, is this uh, 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 more positive than the trauma? Yeah. And as I tell you, I have this girl with very severe lupus. And unfortunately, the doctors were treating her with kind of chemotherapy. What told her. And... Uh, she used to come and just cry in the beginning, and then I just told her, you know, you're the boss here. And if you want me to stop, I stop. And she calmed down, she allowed me to do it. We used to put video, children videos. She was a big fan of the uh, elbow. <laughs> so she passed the full session with my iPhone, looking to elbow. But it was a big challenge yeah. for her. And, yeah. Yeah. What about heavy metal detox through colon therapy? Um, heavy metals, uh, lots of people that were doing, I work with lots of people doing chelation and at the same time doing colonics. And it's amazing because um, I work for many, many years with uh, uh, people doing that and you can see almost the metal there when they are detoxifying. It's amazing the result. I highly recommend if you are doing any kind of cleanse that you do the colonics at the same time because if you are detoxifying, you want the toxins there as less time as possible. So I really, really, really recommend to do it. So how many would you do on, say, a 10-day cleanse? Uh, in the 10, it, it, I will recommend at least two a week. There are several different treatments. There are some people, for example, do the 14-day challenge, what is one almost every day. But in average, in 10 days, I will say at least three minutes. Yeah, just to make sure. And I always recommend, too, that uh, before you start the cleanse, that you clean your colon. And special, for example, even if you go in raw food, I highly, highly recommend that you do a series of colonics before you go in. Especially if you had lots of constipation for many years, for almost sure you have a leaking colon. So if you start right away raw without doing kind of a colon cleanse, there's lots of toxins that are in your body, in your colon, that start being released. And if it's a leaking colon, they go straight to your bloodstream. And you can have huge reaction of detoxification. Like, I've seen the most amazing things. So, I really recommend, if you're going to any big diet change, if you want to do any cleanse, do colonics before. And then during. I highly recommend that. We have a uh, wheatgrass or Excuse organic me? coffee. You mentioned a leaking colon. Leaking colon? Um, it's for example, imagine you see that man that is here. Oops, where is he? That colon stretch. He stretch so much. Like if I do this to my shirt and I stretch it each time more, can you see little holes there? <coughs> That's a leaking colon. It leaks. He cannot hold what he should inside anymore. So a lot, and so that's one of the major problems also to keep so much stuff there. And lots of people go, for example, straight to raw food with a leaking colon. I don't recommend. But all the others, like it's the best we can do to our bodies, raw food. <laughs> But each case is the case, like if you really want to change, you need to see first where you are to make a plan how to go. That's disgusting, having poo go into your blood. So, Excuse um, me? <laughs> I'm just saying it's really disgusting having poo go into your blood. Um, uh, it's not the poo itself, but it okay. will be like the toxins. The toxins? Yeah. It's not that big, the holes. 
<laughs> okay, I know. Do you do, uh, Sophia, do you do uh, wheatgrass or organic coffee? Uh, yes, I use several things. So in my machine, let's see if we can go to the first. I'll show you right here. Oh, actually here we cannot see it. Yeah, we, oh, maybe here. See here? There's like a bottle in the top. Yeah. Yeah. So I can, that's what I call the enema. <laughs> so the machine does all the clean. And then in this jar here, I can mix whatever I want to be mixed with the water. So I use uh, uh, wheatgrass. Um, I can use, co I have a special coffee too. So we can have lots of tea parties there. <laughs> um, I use coffee, I use uh, special teas, aloe vera, um, C3, C dal. I have a, a huge spectrum of stuff that I can mix with the water to help. And of course that will depend on why you are there and what we are treating. So. Uh, everybody asks me what is coffee, so I have a very special coffee and one of the things the coffee really helps is to de detoxify your liver. Mm. And the reason, and some people ask me, how can you use coffee and you're telling me not to drink coffee? <coughs> it's a very easy answer. When you drink coffee this way, it goes to your bloodstream and it's highly toxic. When I use <coughs> coffee the other way, um, it goes almost like straight to your liver, but it doesn't go to your bloodstream. So it pretty much is going to provocate your liver. And how that's going to help? The liver produces bile, that is storage in your gallbladder, but it's produced actually by the liver. And so what the liver does, uh, uh, what the bile is going to do is, it's going to break down your food, but it breaks down also toxins. So, by using the coffee, the liver suddenly produces a higher amount of bile that is going to help to break down more toxins. So, it's, uh, I almost always, in the end of the treatment, I start using coffee to break down toxins. But almost always, I use grass for everybody. What is, and the reason is the grass is not the grass itself, but it's more because it has chlorophyll, and chlorophyll also helps to break down to uh, toxins and chlorophyll also really helps when I put it in it's going to help to break down the fecal matter that it's there for so long. Uh, I used to use a lot this example if you imagine your colon has a pipe where stool pass for years and years and years and years you cannot just decide like special woman going to understand me. When you decide to clean your house, you cannot just go there, oh, today I'm going to clean this pipe and pick up a cloth and think you're going to be able to take everything out. You need to soak it. And soak it and soak it to break down what's around. So that's pretty much what a colonic is going to do. And some of the things mixed with the water like chlorophyll will help me in that process. Lots of times also I ask people um, to do at home a castor oil compress <coughs> because the castor oil has this amazing property that is going really deep and so he can actually reach there and he's going to help me to break down the heart stool, special for people with constipation and he, he actually stimulates the liver to detox. So put on the outside? On the outside? Yeah, I put in the outside. Normally what I do is I buy organic castor oil and with a, a cheese cloth or very old face cloth, you just soak it totally with castor oil. I like to warm it up a little bit, not too much because it's going in your skin. And then... Uh, um, and then what you do is you put it right here in, in the top of your stomach. I like it sometimes also to put actually in my liver. And, and then I wrap with SRAM wrap because that thing drips all over. And then I put a warm bottle or magic bag in the top 
and I just lie down like that for around an hour. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I really like it. Like I know that my mom, I like uh, growing up as a child, I used to be constipated all the time, and so I used to get the suppositories, yeah. right, or castor oil, yeah. right, and it, it was obviously just because of a, <laughs> or but it, it was internally. Now, are, yeah. is it better to put it on top? Of I don't really or? like it internally oh. because it gives you horrible cramps, and oh, okay. you will yeah. go, but the payoff yeah. is horrible. Yeah. yeah, I remember someone told me before I gave birth, drink a whole bunch of castor oil, and you know, and that's the same, like lots of people go to colonoscopy and they take all that stuff that is horrible and it's actually really dangerous for old people oh, wow. okay. yeah so it's much safer to just do the preparation with colon uh, colon hydrotherapy okay and I was gonna ask you about the small children being constipated like um, say a three-year-old you know holding it for three days like that is that too long to be going? You should is, be going, yeah. It is. And, and especially, like, we should go at least three times a day. And okay. the child, um, normally, the main reason is diet. Yeah. And uh, lots of people say kids don't like vegetables. Um, I'm going to be hard, but I really think, you know, the kids eat what you eat. So yeah. if you eat healthy, they eat healthy too. So if you start changing a little bit your diet, they change too. Do you recommend for someone that young, though, like the probiotics, like there's a lot of talk about the probiotics like in yogurt and yeah. um, all your acidophilus and your, your bifidus, do you recommend a high concentration or like... I highly recommend, for, yeah, yeah, I think children should take that. I have it always at home and especially when they are getting sick and all that, yes, yeah. okay. I really recommend that. Um, I don't recommend the ones because there's a big fashion now. Everything has probiotics. I don't know if you noticed that on TV. And there's lots of yogurts that they say they are highly probiotics. But the high level of sugar and, and the starch is so high that it's not benefit. So um, if you give them like a really nice organic yogurt, it has lots of... Uh, uh, acid offals and then what you can do is you can smash some fruit and mix with or there's really nice uh, uh, probiotics that you can buy in natural food store that are powder and so you can actually mix in the yogurt but one thing you need to pay attention with acid offals is um, because it's a fashion now they are selling them everywhere acid offals is a live bacteria so if it's in the light and in the, in, in, in the shelf for a long period of time, you are paying for that bacteria. So there's no use to that. So I really recommend you to spend a little more money and buy high quality uh, acid offals. I'm kind of over time, so okay. thank, you. thank you very much and I hope you enjoy it.